Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. We're recapping arguably the most thrilling and successful 15-day period in the history of Howard Community College Athletics. Men's lacrosse leads off. Howard battles Anne Arundel in the Region 20 Championship. Let's go to Gary Williams. Thanks, Diane. An automatic bid to the national tournament is on the line as Howard takes on Anne Arundel in the Region 20 Championship. The Dragons are looking to win the second Region 20 title in program history. Coach Faust's Dragons enter the contest undefeated against Region 20 schools. And entering the final, Howard's average margin of victory against Region 20 opponents is 17 goals. The Dragons' regular season game against Anne Arundel was a one-sided affair as Howard outclassed the Riverhawks and scored a 15-goal win on the road. The cross analyst Mike Jones is with us for the championship. And Mike, what makes the Dragons so tough? Well, Gary, they're fundamentally sound. They're athletic, they're disciplined, they know what needs to be done. It's hard to be successful against a team that plays like a team and has skill and talent. Coach Faust has done a great job putting this team together from the recruiting process all the way through preparing them for championship play. And that's why they're so dominant in Region 20 this year. Anne Arundel enters the championship with an 11-4 overall record. The Riverhawks have won seven straight, and they're playing at home and will be hungry to avenge that 15-goal loss to HCC. Howard battles Anne Arundel next. Let's go to the highlights. First quarter, Chris Reinhardt dodging above, goal line extended. Feeds it to Ian Decker on the crease. Howard takes the lead. Howard's extra man unit takes the field. Davis Carr goes down the middle, gets himself a superb angle. Carr with the man up tally. 6-2 Howard, thanks in part to the faceoff unit led by Skylar Briscoe. HCC won 7 of 11 first quarter faceoffs. Decker absorbs a few checks. Still Decker. Finds Reed Merlo uncovered in the middle of the field. Eight yards out. Scores! 7-2 Howard. Second quarter, Brett Carter gets possession for Anne Arundel. Decker flies up and lands a big hit. Keegan Moen with the ground ball. To Reinhardt, attacking the unsettled situation. Decker's up with him. First team All-American, Ian Decker scores! Decker once again able to win his matchup. Anne Arundel showing some frustration. Michael Bigelow up against Carr. Mark Bowser with the stick save and he smothers the rebound attempt. Two plays back to back where Anne Arundel fades away instead of going across the face of the goal. They should take that one more step to glory. Here Howard does it the right way. Ekstrom gets topside, keeps going across the face of the goal and scores easily. Ekstrom high to low gives Howard a seven goal lead. Briscoe just won the face off attacking the unsettled situation. Briscoe forces the defender to make a decision. Briscoe dumps it off to Ian Decker. Howard puts up 14 goals in the first half. Third quarter, Decker goes right back to work. Decker with nine goals in the Region 20 Championship. Ian Decker is just having his way. They're not doing what it takes to stop him. Coach Faust has a similar philosophy to mine. Doing the ordinary things better than anyone else is more important than doing anything extraordinary. We always hear Coach Faust stressing the fundamentals. Here we see it pay off. Howard did the little things right, and Anne Arundel didn't. Howard wins the Region 20 Championship, the first of the Coach Faust era. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Coach Faust, just talk about what this day means to you, all the work you've put in the years you've been here. Uh, it's, uh, I want to say satisfying, but at the same time, I, uh, I'm very grateful for, you know, the coaching staffs that I've had, uh, especially this year's, and then, uh, you know, the players. I got, I got an outstanding group of guys, you know, so that's uh, honestly, you know, where my thoughts are and, 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 and how I'm feeling right now. Kind of a little bit in shock right now, but, um, you know, I, <clears throat> we've worked really hard for this, and so, you know, it's not really a surprise. I don't want to say it's a surprise, but, you know, it's just a sense of satisfaction would probably be the best way to put it. One emphasis you've always had is character. Talk about the character of this group of young men. Real good, real good set, real gr good group of guys who, you know, are, are all friends. They all get along. And this is my fourth year as, as head coach at, at this program, and that has never happened until this year. Um, and so I think it's a special 
a special occasion when that can that can happen because <clears throat> you know these guys aren't necessarily living together and they're not spending a lot of time off the field necessarily together because you know we're at a junior college but you know everyone is is working out there for one another and and that happens not only on game days but in practices and you know um you know, I'm just, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now. <laughs> How it handled Ocean County College in the NJCAA National Tournament play-in game, setting up a rematch against Genesee Community College in the national semifinal. The winner advances to the national championship, and the loser season will come to an end. This will be the third meeting over the past 12 months between these two programs. Genesee beat Howard in the 2016 NJCAA play-in game and earned a regular season win over the Dragons this past April. Howard is looking to reach the national championship for the first time in program history. The cross analyst Mike Jones will be with us once again. Mike, how can Howard keep this thing going? Well, Gary, they need to keep doing what they've been doing best. They're very good on transition. They need to get the ball in Decker's stick, continue to win at the faceoff X, and Bowser needs to continue to play well on the goal like he has all season. The defending national champion Genesee Cougars entered the contest with an 11-2 overall record. The Cougars are on an eight-game winning streak, and they're undefeated against Region 20 opposition. Mike, describe the Cougars' game. Well, traditionally, they're very physical, and they back it up with some skill on the offensive end. I think their goalie needs to come up big in this game and take the wind out of Howard Sales with some big saves. Traditionally, for top five teams, it's been very hard to beat the same team twice in one year. Onondaga seems to be the only program that does it consistently. They're fired up in Syracuse. Two familiar foes square off in a win or go home showdown. Let's go to the highlights. First quarter, Seth Ferguson dodges the daylight. Genesee strikes first. Howard's man up offense goes to work. Kevin Curcio runs it out, dives it out to retain possession for the Dragons. Reed Merlo makes the Cougars pay with an extra man tally. Ian Decker operating from behind the cage. Decker runs it up the gut, scores! Three unanswered for Howard. Dragons defense led by Mark Bowser allowed one goal in the third quarter. Davis Carr hits Merlo. Four goals and one assist from Reed Merlo in this win or go home contest, Mike. Reed Merlo showed up with four big goals. He had a couple of nice sniper shots. Van Bortle dodging above goal line extended. Back to Prince. To Alex Mack, Genesee responds with two unanswered. Make it three unanswered, tie game. Failed clear for HCC, Mack to Van Bortle and Genesee takes the lead. A little mistake in clearing. Bowser seemed to just lob the ball up there, which gives the Genesee players a chance to jump the ball. 3.38 remaining now. Curcio can't make the clean catch, but retains possession. Feeds Davis Carr, scores! Another extra man opportunity for GCC. Cougars regain the lead with 1.59 to play. This whole game, Howard's defense seems pretty soft. They're not anticipating. Under a minute. Dragons need to force a turnover. It's on the ground and Mark Bowser wins it. Officials call a slash on Prince. Colin Wallace back for Alexander Stefanos. To Wallace. Beats the goalie high and we're tied. The penalty on Prince means Genesee is man down for the faceoff. 30 seconds to play. Skylar Briscoe and Reed Merlo combine to get it back for Howard. Dragons call a timeout with 10 seconds. Chris Reinhardt scores the game winner! Dragons win. Howard advances to the national championship game for the first time in program history. It's time for the national championship. Howard Community College, making its first national championship appearance, takes on nine-time national champion Onondaga Community College. Now, few outside of Columbia, Maryland, are giving Coach Faust Dragons much of a chance in this one. The 2017 Lasers enter the championship with an undefeated record. Onondaga, the consensus number one team in America, flattened Nassau in the national semifinal, beating the Lions 21-10. 
Coach Wilbur's Lasers have been the class of NJCAA lacrosse since winning their first national title in 2006. Onondaga has only lost four games over the past nine seasons. Lacrosse analyst Mike Jones is back for the biggest game in the history of Howard Lacrosse. Mike, what do you think we'll see from OCC? I don't expect to see anything different than what they've done in the past. They're very good in transition, very good on extra man, and they play solid defense. Howard's going to have to stop their transition and unsettled play to stay in the game. Onondaga is very good at moving the ball off the ground. Final game of the season. Throw the predictions out the window. It's Howard and Onondaga fighting for the national championship. Second quarter, Ian Decker dodging from behind the cage. Riley Smith with the save. Kevin Curcio all over the rebound and it's 4-2 Dragons. Lasers subbing. Howard has numbers. Davis Carr finds Reed Merlo all alone in the middle. Merlo with the right hand bounces it in. Austin Stotts. Larson Sundown feeds Russ Oaks down in front. Onondaga ends a 17-minute scoring drought with the man up tally. OCC has scored three unanswered. Brendan Duggan goes left and ties the game with a backbreaker seconds before the half. Third quarter, Decker quarterbacking behind the goal. Scrambles above goal line extended. Decker gets the better of his defender and scores. James Sexton goes to Stotts. Diving, scores! But he clearly landed in the crease and Coach Faust is arguing that that goal should be disallowed. Stotts' feet were solidly on the ground, so the goal should stand. Onondaga's man up offense goes to work. Sundown, shades of Tom Brady, connects with Stotts and the Lasers regain the lead. Howard has the Lasers man down defense on the ropes here. Dragons swing it to Decker. Decker fights to increase his angle. Scores! OCC won the ensuing faceoff. Lasers respond with a quick counter. Duggan gets topside off the pick. The slide comes, but the slide lets Duggan come back across the middle. And then Oaks comes from the weak side. Howard's defense missed an assignment somewhere. Onondaga's faceoff unit won eight of nine third quarter faceoffs. Fourth quarter now, 11-9 OCC. Extra man opportunity for Howard. Davis Carr to Kevin Curcio in the heart of Onondaga's defense. Curcio gets hit as he's shooting, but Curcio gets what he wants. Lasers move it to Brad Simoncelli. OCC's extra man offense gets the job done. 8.35 to play. Chris Reinhardt takes on number nine in white, Martin. Reinhardt fights through and makes it a one-goal game. 8.20 remaining in the fourth quarter. Evan Schumacher wins the faceoff, running free into the box, and Onondaga responds with a quick counter shot to reclaim the momentum. It's the point man's responsibility to stop the ball on a fast break. When that doesn't happen, no one else really can stop it. Schumacher and Briscoe going at it, falls to Sean Simpson. Dragons push it. Simpson scores! He may have been looking to pass to Ian Decker, nevertheless, count it. Austin Stotts moves with the Russ Oaks. Wide open, Oaks with a national championship hat trick. Howard's man up offense goes to work with 5.30 remaining. Dragons swing it to the weak side quickly. Reed Merlo feeds it to Curcio in the middle. Curcio! Once again, willing to go down the middle and take some punishment. Curcio has his fourth goal of the game. Five minutes to play in the national championship. Reinhardt feeds it to Curcio in the middle. Curcio scores! Dragons tie the game with two answers. Merlo looking to increase his angle. Austin Robinson slides and forces the turnover. Robinson with a tremendous effort. Here come the lasers in transition. Rocket leads the break, goes to Oaks. Bowser with the save. Huge ground ball won by McNabb. No! Stocks with the rebound. Feeds McNabb on the crease. Scores! Terrific ground ball wins for McNabb and Stotts. Onondaga seizes the unsettled situation. If Bowser would have stayed in position, he may have had a shot at a save. Two twenty-one to play. Onondaga comes up with a big time faceoff. Lasers took a timeout looking to hold on to the national championship. 
Matt Leone looking for the takeaway. Officials throw the flag. It's a one minute slash against Howard. Onondaga able to burn 41 seconds before the officials turn the timer on. Onondaga running out the clock. Austin Stotts escapes three dragons and moves the ball. Onondaga wins the national championship, its 10th national title since 2006. It's time for women's lacrosse. Howard Community College goes up against Anne Arundel Community College in the Region 20 Championship. The winner receives an automatic bid to the national tournament. The loser is still alive, but will have to play Region 15 champion Suffolk for the right to compete in the tournament. The defending Region 20 champion Howard Community College Dragons enter the final with a 14-1 record. Coach Ponchione's Dragons are undefeated against Region 20 schools. Anne Arundel Community College enters with a 10-4 record. The Riverhawks are coming off two consecutive one-goal wins. Anne Arundel lost to Howard twice in the regular season, but both games were competitive. The Riverhawks have proved to be HCC's toughest Region 20 opponent this season, and they'll have a shot to take the most important meeting tonight. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Anne Arundel jumps on Howard early. 3-2 lead for the Riverhawks. Olivia Canby with a clean hard check. Yard sale and ground ball for the Dragon sophomore. Canby dodging with room to shoot. Scores! Howard claims its first lead of the contest. Dragons have scored three unanswered. Cassidy Delaney gets it back for HCC. Nice dodge. Delaney, overhand release. Five first half goals for Cassidy Delaney. Here comes Delaney storming down the field. Draws three defenders, moves the ball, finds Delaney Heath. Heath turns and muscles it through the check of Kareen Rivera. Goal! Dragons take their biggest lead of the day, and they do it in a manner that can demoralize the defense. 23 minutes remaining. Riverhawks offense yet to score in the second half. Kendall stole all over that pass. Other end, free position for Delaney. Left-handed finish. 12-7 Dragons with 22 minutes to play. Emily Rowe dodging, gets the upper hand, the Riverhawks respond. 14 minutes, Olivia Canby threads it inside to Sylvia Kim. Scores, Kim able to finish in the tightest of windows. Nine minutes to play, Howard's lead is down to four and another goal for the challenger. We have a three goal game. Anne Arundel won the ensuing draw, and the Riverhawks are back in the ball game. Howard's lead is down to two. Howard won the draw and proceeded to run three minutes off the clock. 4.55 remaining. Sylvia Kim with three goals and an assist in the Region 20 Championship. Dragons go back to back. Howard wins the Region 20 Championship, winning the first two Region 20 titles in program history in consecutive seasons. Let's send it down for some post-game reactions. I'm really proud of the way the girls stepped up. You know, we had played Anne Arundel twice in the regular season. Both games were tight games. We got down early in both games, um, so we were able to face some adversity, which it's always nice to be able to look back and draw on those kind of experiences. And we knew Anne Arundel would come out tonight, um, you know, having lost twice to us, they're probably telling their players, you know, it's really hard to for a team to beat you three times in a year and I tried to flip the script with our girls and we used that same logic last year when we had lost to Hartford twice in the regular season and convinced our girls to go into that final game you know thinking that they weren't going to beat us three times and then before the game tonight I had to undo it and try to explain to our girls that actually you can beat a team three times and we need to go in and you know we felt like we matched up well with them they got a lot of talent they're very physical they're well coached um, and they were everything we thought they would be. And we we'll wish them well in the playoffs to, to make it to Nationals, and hopefully we'll see them again somehow at Nationals. Next up for Coach Ponchion's squad, a rematch with third-ranked Onondaga in the National Semifinal. The winner advances to the National Championship. The loser season will come to an end. These two programs met in last year's National Semifinal. The Lasers scored a convincing win over the Dragons, ending their season in the process. Howard rocked Onondaga in this year's regular season meeting, handing the Lasers a 12-4 defeat. OCC has responded well, winning 8 of 10 since, and both losses were to four-time defending national champion Monroe. 
how it tangles with Onondaga in the Final Four. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Cassidy Delaney wins a hard fart ground ball off the restart. Still Delaney, barreling through four defenders. Delaney will not be denied. 1-0 Howard. Once again, Dragons push it downfield after the restart. Olivia Canby running it up the gut, and there's not much the goalie can do about that. Overhead bouncer right on the crease, the high release off the turf, and Howard extends his lead to two goals. Canby and goalie Mackenzie O'Brien meet again. Canby riding, and officials blow the whistle. Ensuing restart, Canby playing with volition, pounces on O'Brien and lands the trail check. Kelsey Scott secures the ground ball and attacks. Dragons look quicker off restarts and flat out faster in general here in the early going. Olivia Canby again. She was not recognized as an All-American, and here she is showing why that decision was a Roy Jones Jr. in the 88 Olympics caliber injustice. 30 seconds now, the Lasers have some momentum. Cass Myers beats the double team and storms the crease for a dunk. Onondaga with a 3-1 run in the final five minutes of the first half. On to the second. 23 minutes to play. Thompson draws the slide, gets the defense moving, and Myers ties the game. Onondaga erases what was once a three-goal deficit. Ensuing possession, Rachel Sigwalt, south of goal line extended, looking to distribute. She hits Scott, sensational finish, and the lead is back with Howard. Number 17 in white, Cassidy Delaney, one of the all-time great scorers in the history of Howard's program. Against the double team, beelines to the middle of the field. Delaney with the bouncer high off the turf. Thompson behind, now looking to feed, the ambitious pass leads to a Howard takeaway. Kelsey Scott showed up today, big ground ball, and clear for the Catonsville High School alum. Late into possession, Scott still has it, and she's wearing down this Onondaga defense. Scott runs by her defender and scores her third goal of the contest. Howard's lead is back to three goals, and excitement is beginning to set in. Onondaga looking to end its 10-minute scoring drought. Bridget Regan, Kendall stole with the save. She smothers the bouncer. Eight minutes remaining. Nicole Keller dodges to the middle, forces the issue, and gets herself a free position shot. Keller shows off her speed. Keller sticks it up high and takes a little more fight out of the lasers. Howard won the ensuing draw. Now we're inside seven minutes. Delaney, quick burst. They've done it. Howard scores the first national tournament win in program history. The Dragons are moving on to the National Championship. It's time for the National Championship. How it looks to upend four-time defending national champion Monroe Community College. The Tribunes enter the final with a 14-0 record. In fact, Monroe has won 82 consecutive games dating back to 2012. Earlier this season, however, Coach Ponchion's Dragons gave Monroe its toughest test since the streak began. The two programs have been on a collision course ever since. It's time for the national championship. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Monroe has an early lead. All-American Dana Isaacs creates separation with her speed and quickness here. And Isaacs sidearms it in to nothing tribute. Howard just made a stop on defense. Monroe is riding. Sylvia Kim moves it to Nicole Keller. Cassidy Delaney. Olivia Canby gets the middle and picks up where she left off in the regular season meeting with Monroe, going back to the bounce shot, and once again, it pays dividends. After another defensive stand for the Dragons, Howard is now man up. Keller gives goalie Sarah Annabel some confidence here with a relatively routine save on the free position attempt. Other end of the field, Monroe is still shorthanded. Howard surrenders a man down goal here. Tribunes catch HCC sleepy. We're now back to seven on seven. Christy Hahn gets underneath and scores her second of the day. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Keller hits Sylvia Kim on the crease. Dragons get one back. Timely play for the Dragons All-American. Three Dragons and one Tribune are serving penalties. Six on five advantage for Monroe. Jenny DeLuca executes a superb high to low shot and Tribunes take a three goal lead. 2.32 remaining in the half. Number three in maroon, Danielle Spencer, breaks up the pass, but Han wins the ground ball and sends it to Kendall Jones in the middle. She breaks free with the pump fake and scores. Tribunes take their biggest lead of the contest. 
Second half now, Howard is in an unfamiliar position, having trouble offensively. Dragons have scored four more first half goals in every other game this season. Dragons with only two goals in the first 32 minutes of the national championship. Kim playing quarterback behind the goal, connects with Scott, and Kelsey Scott once again provides a lift for the Dragons. Howard just forced a turnover. We're inside 20 minutes. Delaney and Scott can't connect. Looks like a tip pass. Monroe's defense comes through once again. Late in the possession, Kendall scoots with the bouncer. The shot is off. Stoll vacates the crease and aggressively pursues the ground ball. Stoll can't come up with it. She's out of position, and Monroe delivers a demoralizing empty netter. The Tribunes took the ensuing draw. Now they're on the extra man as well. Isaacs delivers another sidearm tally, and with 17.32 remaining, this one is getting out of hand for the Region 20 champions. Monroe won the draw again. Christy Hahn dodging, scores her third of the game. The Tribunes win their fifth consecutive national championship, 83 consecutive wins and counting for the Rochester Power. Our next guest helped bring home Howard Community College's first and only team national championship back in 2013. This year, as head coach, he led the men's program to a fourth place finish at nationals. It's a pleasure to welcome Dr. Robert Etheridge. Welcome, Coach. Thank, thank you for having me. What were the highlights from Nationals? Um, unlike the last few years, I mean, we've always been known as a good sprint program and decent distance, and um, we've always lacked in the field events. I think this year we scored the majority of our points in the field between uh, the throws and the jumps, um, between having the second place high jumper, we had, uh, we won the discus, third in the hammer. Were you pleased with the overall finish of all your student athletes at Nationals? I was. I, I was. I was pleased. Uh, I know a lot of them put in a lot of hard work, and some of them were a little disappointed in their performances because they didn't do as as they expected. But um, overall, I think we had a wonderful meet, and I, I don't think anybody had anything to hang their heads about. Was it hard for you as a coach or for the kids to make an adjustment from coaches that were there for over 20 years to a whole new philosophy of things? Was that tough in the beginning, or did they gravitate very easily and eagerly for this new new teaching yeah anytime you have a a change such as like a head coach some of that magnitude it, you know it's, especially if you have kids the year before athletes the year before who are with those with those coaches you're gonna you're, it's gonna be a little difficult i mean just changing up the way things are done you know a lot of the training was different um so it's not not I'm gonna say I don't, I don't think any anyone was resistant. I think every everyone, for the for most part, a few people were hesitant, um, but it didn't take long for everyone to jump on board and just we we all pulled on for the same team. So, so coach, I understand that you'll be leaving us as our head track and field coach. Um, can you tell us what your future plans are? Um, well, I, I will be moving down to Houston uh, to take on some personal endeavors. I have uh, I'll still be. Uh, heavily involved in the education system. Just kind of a change of scenery. I have some things, you know, uh, personally that I need to I need to handle. So I, I'll be down there. I'm, I'm closer to where I am from originally. I'm from originally from like three hours away from uh, Houston, Texas, a little town called Alexandria, Louisiana. So I'll be within reach of some people, but just following on some personal endeavors and, you know, trying to, I don't know, advance. Advance as a professional, I guess. Well, on behalf of Howard Community College and for me personally as the athletic director, I want to thank you, Coach Rob, for the years of service you gave to our student athletes, both on the track and also the academic side when you were working here part time. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to wish you well. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for highlights and interviews. Thanks for watching. And remember, go Dragons! <laughs>